sap out of y'all. Y'all got a whole lot of sap in you. Come in the Lord's house with a whole lot of sap. They ain't waste nothing, just sap. They just got a whole lot of green sap. They don't, don't come here to worship God. Looking sour, mad. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get up here to do all that. A amen. Can y'all tell sap when you see it? Father, you know what sap is? <laughs> Lord ain't told me to give no Russian message. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and the Lord will abundantly pardon. The only way God can help you, you got to stop doing what you're doing. He said, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Stop your sinful scheming. You got a lot of sinful schemers in the church house. Schemers. They know they're doing wrong and they're scheming. They mean to stop you from doing right. Not only you, but a whole lot of folks around them, they, they scheme. They, they're pretending they're doing the right thing and doing the wrong thing. Thank you, brother. You, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. A amen. Sinful schemers. That's what I just said. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought and let him return to the Lord. Let, let, let him stop doing it. Give up your, your, your crooked way. I'm, I'm losing y'all, huh? Give up your crooked way. How many of y'all know y'all got some crooked way? I'm talking to y'all now. Thank you, son. How many of y'all know you got some crooked way? You think all y'all ways straight? Come on, y'all talk back to me. <laughs> Do you recognize your own personal crooked way? Yeah, yeah, when the devil tried to make me go crooked with some crooked ways, I have to get, tell him, get behind me, Satan. He tried me just like he tried all of you. He tried to make me hate some of y'all. No, you ain't right. They don't like you. Amen, you ought to stop doing so much for them. Huh? But I tell the devil, get behind me, Satan. You can't make me crooked because somebody else crooked, amen, trying to deal with me. Yes, so you need to get ready your crooked way. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man that thought, you got to do that, nobody else. Let the wicked for You ought to know when you're not right on the inside. And when you're not right on the inside, that means some wickedness is on the inside. Some wickedness, amen, is placed there. On the inside, how many of y'all can recognize people when you're passing by or, or deal with them for a while that they got some wickedness in their heart? Thank you, brother. Help me now. Matt, can you tell it? Can you tell it? Can you tell it? All right, dear. Amen. I mean, how many of y'all sisters actually can tell it when you got a wicked person? Thank you, daughter. Well, the only way that wicked person will stop and slow up his wickedness is when you let them know that you know that they are wicked. Huh? The, somewhere I read it said, come ye out from among them and be ye separate. Because you are a peculiar people. You don't act like a wicked person act. Even though, even though, uh, somewhere I read that Jesus said, the wicked people, they're just tares among wheat. And that job is placed there to smother the wheat. To keep the wheat from growing. From bringing forth food, the tail is wrapped around the wheat because the tails know if the wheat grow and mature, somebody will be fed by the wheat. We got some tail all around here, and, and they are wrapped around the wheat. What do you mean, brother preacher? When they know you're right and they don't want you to be right and they don't want you to work with the pastor and they don't want you to do what's right for the church, what they will do, the task. They'll wrap themselves around you and tell you, if I were you, I wouldn't do that. You're doing too much. 
How many of you heard that? You're doing too much. If I was you, I wouldn't do what you're doing. What they're trying to do is to stop God's will that is trying to be done in you and through you and by you. Good God Almighty. Oh, yeah. So Jesus said, since you can't recognize the tales that are around, leave them alone. Tell me about it. And in the day of the harvest, I'll separate them. I won't make no mistake, but I'll separate them, the wheat from the tear. Oh, glory. Oh, yeah. He's able to separate the, the wheat from the tear. Do you know it? So that's why I just said, give up your crooked ways, your evil thoughts. Yeah. Say, people. Evil people should stop living evil life. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous man his thought. Let evil people stop living evil life. Do you know anybody that say they are right and you know in your own heart, the heart of your mind, that they are living evil life? Good God Almighty, yeah. When you recognize they're living evil life, Jesus said, come ye up among them and be ye separated. Am I right about it? When you're a child of God, you can't walk hand in hand with the wicked. Oh yeah. No wonder somebody said, one of these days, I'm going where the wicked shall see from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. Let the wicked on this side, on this side of Jordan, if you don't stop your wickedness on this side of Jordan, you'll be like the chair which is driven by the mighty wind. Good God Almighty. Oh yeah, but if you're a child of God, you'll be able to stand in the midst of the storm. When the storm of life is raging, Isaiah is talking to Israel. Israel had been in bondage, had been in captivity rather. They had been down in Egypt, down in, down in Babylon, under captivity. They was in Egypt in bondage. But now they had been in captivity in Babylon. Yeah. First of all, when we look back at here's the life. Yeah. They went into bondage in one direction and God delivered them. He brought them out bondage and gave them a land that they didn't have to pay for. Yeah, and they did wickedness in the sight of God. And God said, if you do wicked, I, I'm gonna punish you. But if you do what is right, I'll bless you. When you get over to the new land, don't pattern your life after those that's already in this land because they're serving our God. They're worshiping our God. Don't pattern yourself after them, but every day study my law. Go back and read my law. The law that I gave to Moses on Mount Sinai in order to govern your life that you might walk right and that you might talk right a long life journey. If you study my word, stay in the word, you'll be able to walk right. And Israel, good God Almighty, they forgot about what God had said and they turned to the left 
and they turned to the right. And because they disobeyed, God commanded me, told Jeremiah, go tell Zedekiah, the king, yeah, because of that disobedience, I'm going to send down the Chaldean. Good God Almighty, from Babylon, going to take them into captivity because I'm tired of their wickedness. How many of you know that God get tired of your wickedness? Oh, glory. Yeah. Tell him, Jeremiah, that I'm getting tired of their wickedness. And I'm going to send Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon to take you into captivity. Yeah. But some tales, some tales came along. The false prophets would tell. They came along and tried to delete the words of Jeremiah and told King Zedekiah, this is not going to happen. You're not going to have to go into Babylon captivity. Yeah, the Bible says Jeremiah had given a letter, a letter from God. Yeah, King got angry. The Bible said he taking his pen knife and cut up the letter and threw it in the fire. Good God Almighty. I know you don't know what I'm talking about because you haven't read the word of God. But yeah, he taking the letter and threw it in the fire. But God, but God, God have an own seen eye. God, God, he's omniscient. He got all wisdom, all knowledge, all understanding. Yeah, he knows everything. He knows the secret contents of your heart. That's why Isaiah said, let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord. Yeah, oh glory, yeah. And I heard God told Jeremiah, Get your secretary, tell him to write the same thing. And not only that, but I want him to add some more. Let Zedekiah know he can't stop my word from going forward. Yeah, I, uh, Jeremiah did what the Lord said. Went back to the king's palace. Said, you don't want to believe him. The word of God, but you going into captivity. You might well get ready and surrender yourself. Oh glory, because you got to go there. Yeah, take your sons and your daughter. Make preparation. When they get there, let them build some home, plant some garden, plant vineyard, because they're gonna have to stay there for 70 long years. Whatever God say, it's gonna happen. Yeah, I'm so glad. God, he know what he's doing. But now, when Isaiah wrote these words in the, in the 40th chapter, he tell Isaiah to give Israel comforting words. Say, comfort ye, comfort you, my people. Yeah, they have paid, yeah, for their sin. And their warfare is all over now. You can go back home, yeah. And so down in the wood, God told Isaiah to tell them, since I'm gonna bring you back to your homeland, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man, his thoughts, and let them make a turn and come back to the Lord. And I will pardon them. I will forgive that sin. God is able to forgive you. Let the wicked. I know that's foreign to most of you because you haven't.